something's ha something's going on up here where it's my body's like showing me the information. The challenge is asking different questions and just feeling into which ones feel real. And I'll know when I get to the right question when I experience feel like a change, like relief. Look for emotion in those experiences, and then like ask like what am I what am I not seeing like if you think about when an athlete injures themselves it's when they're not like right here right they're distracted or they're emotional or they're upset I think that I think the most difficult thing for people to, to relate to would be when they don't perceive that they're at fault for their own injury someone uh, strikes them with a vehicle or right. you know they're attacked but John John teaches that there's four levels of intuition from most John who? to least dense the physiology is the most dense form followed by the mind which is like what most people refer to as their intuition right followed by their soci sociology so like what compels you to give me feedback what compels you to say what you say to me what compels you to react to me what compels you to have emotion about me you are in my environment my sociology and the things that you say, although they are your experience, also relate to my experience by the nature that we're having a shared experience. So for me to write off my sociology as completely random is sort of a byproduct of people not being able to reconcile the, the dichotomy of everything being a miracle or nothing is, or everything is my fault in my life or nothing is my fault. I am responsible for my own life and everything in my life, or I'm not. Those are like binary functions. and so. When I refer to like sociology as a form of intuition, it pushes people up against that decision. Like, are you willing to be in ownership and in accountability to your full and entire experience of life, including the feedback you receive from other people? Or are you gonna try to push off responsibility into other people because you can conveniently label them as emotional? Or you can say, they have nothing to do with me, except they are in your environment. They are in my life. They feel compelled to say what they've said to me. That feedback isn't without merit. With every decision, there's a corresponding action that looks like work. But I think that action is only proof of the decision. So that makes the decision the hard part. Decision is where the real work happens. And so the weight of decision making is a weight that most people don't want to bear. So the closer truth is that you are making decisions and really it's just there's a weight to acknowledging them. Like, I don't sit here and decide I don't like chocolate. I discover I don't like chocolate. Is that a decision? Or is it the awakening to a decision? Becoming accountable to what's true for me. And I can't discover what's true for me if I'm attached to the identity of Alexander being the person who gets to choose. Because now what that means is every time I awaken to a new truth, but I don't feel like I decided it, I'm gonna feel like a victim. Like you have no agency or something like that. I have that. no agency. I didn't pick my body. Right. I didn't pick my mind. I didn't pick my environment. I didn't pick my friends. I, all of this happened to me. Measurable genius happens to me. I don't get to decide who I work with. I'm dependent on my environment. The, the question is, in the face of my environment, will I come to terms with my truth in the moment? Will I come to terms with what's true for me in any given moment? Or will I resist it? And like this, this physiological reaction I'm experiencing is a form of resistance. I'm, I'm not looking at or I'm not willing to see some part of what's true for me, right? I can articulate it, I can go in circles sort of explaining like the relationship. The reaction I'm having is an attempt of my body to like, I'm t it's like, I'm, I'm tensing up. It's like, I don't wanna look. I mean, I do, I do wanna look. Right. But like the truth in my moment is I don't you want to look. Otherwise, Otherwise you feel this better. wouldn't be happening. Yeah. If I can give myself uh, dopamine by imagining a fantasy, if I can give myself cortisol by imagining a nightmare, I can provoke my muscles into tension and into spasm by having a conflicting idea. Oh, wow. I have the capability to be in response to my environment and I have the capability to create my environment and I have ability to create an environment in here that has nothing to do with those other two things. I can create an environment in here with my stories and with the meaning that I give to things and with the questions that I ask. Right. And um, 
I personally just think it's more likely that I have a a tension in my mind. I have a, a war of two ideas. Part of me wants to be appreciated and valued for my advice and for my coaching and for my capability to help people move into action when they stay stuck and stagnant for so long. The only proof people will accept is what's real and they will fail to build it themselves and so that's why we have a services business. You can go hire coaches right now and pay them $60,000 American a year to tell you exactly what I would tell you and I would probably tell it to you better because I actually have a business with 11 people and I have a culture and I've actually built most of the systems that these coaches hypothesize about. Right. And I've been accountable to those systems. And in reality, my services are underpriced because our projects actually get people places. But they would never get the clients places without the coaching because they would never can persist long enough with good strategic guidance and good coaching to make it through the actions that are necessary as an agency. And they would never manage the complexity to build what we build here because they can't manage the in 10 virtual assistants they've cycled through over the last three years to effectively build anything of uh, endurance. Nothing they built lasts, it's just sand castles that disappear. Whereas what we build will last. So I'm, I'm, I'm resisting the box of being labeled a service provider because without the coaching, the service doesn't matter, but without the service, the coaching has no results. And so for me to fulfill on either, I'm doing both, but I feel that both are in contest. They don't necessarily have a sense of commitment to a long-term relationship because they don't ever hire people. Can you imagine if I hire you and I'm like, hey, you have 60 days to prove yourself, go. <laughs> like, that would never work for an employee. Why do you think it would work for an agency? Yeah. Furthermore, I get a year into agency services and we've just begun. We've just begun. For Measurable Genius to do anything of consequence, I need like three to five years to get rolling, to seriously have a business. Three to five years will get us to a million dollars. Five to 10 years will get us to 10. And I'm certain I can do that with anybody. The fucking gamble is them, right? So just go ahead and push all your risk of being a business owner downstream into a consulting environment where you think that you get to treat an agency that's actually gonna build an empire for you like a VA while diminishing the value of the coaching in a moment of convenience because you're having a sense of insecurity and a lack of comprehension of value. But all of this is on you. All of this is on you. Go build your business without me then. I don't care. It seems easy. It's different than I fucking build it for you. They're, they're fucking different things. It seems easy is not the same as I understand the fucking nuances and the complexity and the challenges of bringing a complicated recipe to bear into a result that actually works to produce the vision that we can agreed is the right vision to build for your business. It's actually complicated. And if you're in a place where it seems easy, you're not actually understanding the downsides and the costs and the complexities. And if you're gonna hire somebody to do it, you should just believe them when they tell you it costs this much because it costs this much. I mean, parachute into uh, an airline. I know everyone likes to get on the fucking plane. They're like, wow, they're nickel and diming me with the baggage, the fucking baggage fees. Can you manage a billion dollars of cash flow a month? Can you employ 160,000 people and get them to do what you need them to do? Can you keep 300 very complicated pieces of engineering in the sky and not kill anybody? You can't fucking drive to work without almost killing somebody. But you're telling the baggage fee or you're telling the airline that the baggage fee is the fucking problem and you're being nickeled and dimed? Shut your mouth and get on the fucking plane and fly across the planet and be <coughs> grateful for it. Like, stop fucking imagining with your idealistic mind with absolutely no concept of management and bearing absolutely no weight of accountability that you know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh, you did, you. I have to pay $25 to have Oh, and by the way, we have to enroll these people into getting on the plane. I have to market to you. I have to figure out your desire in order to justify keeping the money because everyone has this ridiculous buyer's remorse in retrospect because the grass is greener on the other side once they've decided, I don't know, $400 should have been $370 because I have a fucking spreadsheet. Give me a break. Go sit in the accounting offices at Boeing and uh, tell me how quickly you understand what the fuck is going on there. Just help me, help me understand. Every Tuesday, payroll for 160,000 people. You better make sure there's money in the bank. Oh, where does the money come from? Airlines, we also spend money on, I don't know, gas, airports, 
It's not like it's a complicated system. There's probably like only a trillion moving parts to make sure that that flight attendant gets his paycheck. But that had a bad day and it's the airline's fault, right? It's crazy. And then you actually have to do it. But like flying the plane is like the last step. It's like, cool. Like without underselling the value of a captain, like flying the plane is not the complicated part of running an airline. Like by the time you get to flying the plane, there is a checklist from start to finish, which have been built on top of a whole world of systems. Redundancies on redundancies, there, yeah. Yeah. And all of that is in the face of economy when everybody's trying to survive and a lion might be at your door tomorrow to eat you. Right? Yeah. Like I have a back pain and I'm like, okay, like an hour of my day is gone and I'm gonna move 20 things in my schedule and just... So to get on a 30 minute call with someone and be like, what's the value of measurable genius is an existentially challenging question. Yes.